next song, please welcome Paul Karan Ruba, Senior Product Marketing Manager for Quick Logic, who will this who will discuss V for superior display view ability and user experience. Let's welcome Paul. Thank you. Uh, my name is Paul Karazuba, as you said, uh, with uh, Quick Logic, and I'm here today to talk about a novel solution for balancing display viewability and power consumption. So first, uh, a little bit about Quick Logic. Um, we've been a presenter many times at the DigiTimes Technical Forum, so some people may have heard this. Uh, this may be new. But uh, Quick Logic, we are a disruptive silicon solution integrator. We're a company that sells IC chips, but we also provide, on a solutions basis, software, firmware, and even application user level software for mobile OSs for our customers. But we sell silicon chips. We're focused on next generation wireless platforms. What I mean by that is we sell our products into markets like tablets, smartphones, data card, mobile enterprise, and applications such as that. We're user experience specialists. What I mean by user experience specialist is each one of our technologies that we design for our chips is based around how to make the user's experience with their smartphone or their tablet better. Meaning, is the display more viewable? Does it run faster? Do the batteries last longer? Everything that makes uh, the, your experience with your smartphone or with your data card better. And finally, uh, we're ideal for fast-changing mobile platforms. We have the ability to customize our chips in a matter of weeks for customers, whereas on an ASIC it may take 12 months. We can sometimes turn a chip as fast as four weeks. And uh, we note there, we are a fabulous semiconductor company. So I'd like to talk a little bit about uh, the subject here, which is uh, balancing display viewability and power savings. So first, the ideal display viewing environment. Um, displays are ideally viewed in controlled environments that are well suited to the human eye, like the room we're in right now. A dark room, bright screen. This is the best place to view uh, content on a display. And as, as such, content is created and edited for those environments. But the reality of mobile displays is that it's, you're almost never viewing your display in an ideal environment. Um, very few of us only will view our smartphones in a dark room. Many of us want to view our mobile displays outside uh, when we're on a train. And this creates, this creates problems. Uh, high ambient light situations. Uh, let's say today you go outside during the day um, and you want to watch a video on your smartphone. You'll notice that because of the amount of ambient light, the display is actually washed out. You can't actually see anything on your display. In mixed lighting conditions, uh, let's say if you're in a car or a train that's moving through a tunnel, you may have to manually change the brightness on your display. Sometimes you may be able to see your display. Sometimes you can't. This obviously is a user experience problem. And finally, low ambient light situations uh, can result in overly bright displays. Sometimes your display is too bright. That causes eye strain, and also it needlessly consumes system power. The brighter a uh, display is, obviously, the more power it consumes. So how does a system designer compensate? Um, most mobile operating systems, like Android, like iOS, like Windows Mobile, offer standard algorithms for modulating or changing display brightness. Of course, brighter displays mean they're more viewable. Um, I'm sure many of us have, on our smartphones have gone into the display brightness menu and moved the brightness up and seen that the display is much more attractive to your eye. However, when you make the display brighter, you greatly decrease your battery life. Um, displays consume uh, as much as 50% of the power of your smartphone or of your tablet. Um, and when you make them more brighter, you are making your battery life much, much shorter. And that's obviously a user experience problem. So what does a system designer do? Um, on this curve right here, what I have is display brightness from low to high, and then ambient light, a dark ambient light to bright ambient light. What this shows is the ideal viewability curve. And this is how a system designer designing a mobile phone or designing a tablet 
would set the brightness of the display according to ambient light. This provides the best viewability in all ambient lighting conditions, but with very high power consumption. Alternatively, you have what's called the ideal power savings curve. As you can see, the brightness is much lower as compared to the viewability curve. So you have the lowest possible power consumption, but your viewability is not as good. So what a system designer would do is implement what we call the typical implementation curve, which is the best balance between viewability and power savings, but it's not ideal for either option. For instance, right here, you can have better viewability or you can have lower power. It's, it's not the best of both, it's, it's a balance. So an alternative solution, which is what I would like to talk about today, is what if an OEM could provide users both the visual experience of the ideal viewability curve and the extended battery life of the power savings curve to its customers? And that's what QuickLogic's V and DPO technologies actually do. So what is V? Um, v stands for Visual Enhancement Engine. It is a hardware-based display viewability optimization technology. Um, those are a lot of very big words. V is a chip. V sits between the applications processor or the CPU and the display. And it optimizes the display content's contrast ratio, dynamic range, and color characteristics on a pixel-by-pixel, frame-by-frame basis to provide optimum viewability based on the human visual system. Now what that means in uh, perhaps cleaner English or simpler English is we, our chip takes in the display and it changes the content of the display to match what your eye wants to best see in your viewing environment. So it's actively changing the content of the display to best match what you want to see. It's both a local and global based technology um, and it bases its pixel by pixel optimization on each individual picture's neighboring regions, eight subregions within the entire frame, and the entire frame. So rather than talk, let me show you what it actually does. So it's always a bit hard to see on big projectors, but this is a native image before V, and this is a native, or this is an image after it has been V processed in a tablet. Now, if you look in the region of the clouds here, the native image, it has medium contrast, as you can tell. So V strength is applied moderately. Now, if you look in the image after V, you notice there's a lot more definition in the clouds. It's easier to see. In the mountain region, there's excellent what we call native contrast. Uh, the image here is very viewable. So V is only applied a small amount in the areas that require contrast enhancement. In the forest region, um, you know, again, it's always hard to see on projectors, but you'll notice that there's a lot more definition in the image here than there is here. And for the, re the reason for that is the native image has extremely low contrast. It's hard to see details in the image. So our V algorithm is applied very heavily into this area to greatly improve the viewability of this area or your ability to see the image. And finally, the lake area here, the contrast is mostly adequate or, or okay. So V is applied only lightly. So what we're saying here is after V processing, the display content is much more viewable and appears much brighter to the user, but the display brightness has not changed. That's a key thing. The brightness of these images is exactly the same, but the viewability of the image is much better with V technology applied. So as uh, V restores and enhances the viewing experience, our other technology, DPO, or Display Power Optimizer, modulates the display brightness based on the OEM's desire for emphasis on power savings, viewing experience, or both. And uh, this is a very key point. These two technologies work very closely together to not only enhance the viewing experience, but also to save power. An OEM can choose an emphasis or uh, an OEM can choose, I want just power savings, or I want just viewing improvement, 
or I want a mixture of both. And I'm going to show you data in a few slides that illustrates how this can change depending on the OEM. So this is the curve that I showed earlier, the ideal viewability curve, the power savings curve, and then what is the typical implementation curve. This is what V actually does graphically. What happens is it actually drops the backlight curve to what here is here, the actual implementation curve. And you can see it's actually dropping it lower than what the power savings curve was. DPO enables display brightness to be set to conserve power and extend system life. But at the same time, V enables the viewability of the display to be consistent with a much higher display brightness. Because V can improve the viewing experience without changing the, without having to increase the backlight, we're able to give you the viewability here, but with backlight level of here. It's the only technology in the world that can provide um, this type of benefit to the user. So what you have here is, this is your actual power savings that you're able to achieve, because even though you have viewability here, you're only powering your display at that level. And then your actual V display enhancement, before if you were to use this curve, this is where your viewability would be. Now it's up here. A new technology that we announced in this uh, earlier, uh, I guess it was last week, last Monday, we announced what we call DPO 2.0. And DPO 2.0 features what we're calling our intelligent brightness control. Uh, and what intelligent brightness control does is, um, the best way, V1.0 uh, changes display brightness based on the ambient light viewing environment. What DPO2 does is it also adapts the display brightness to what the content actually is. Um, when display content is lower contrast or dynamic range, you can lower the brightness of the display without affecting the viewability, which saves power. A perfect example of, of low contrast or dynamic range content is streamed videos, YouTube, Hulu, uh, videos from Facebook. Um, this service uh, streams videos in Japan. So when a, a user is watching content on one of these, we can actually drop the display brightness even more and save almost 10% more power simply based on that. And as we said here, we add display content-based brightness reduction to ambient light viewing uh, display-based reduction. So this is the actual power savings that you're able to achieve with our technology. These are six different examples of customers who have integrated our products into pre-production or to production units, and I'll explain how to read this chart. Um, there are six different examples lettered A through F. The form factor is simply a tablet or a smartphone. Display type and size uh, tells you the size of the display and the type of display it is, LCD or OLED. Now the way to read this is, the original brightness level was the brightness level that the display was set at before our technology was integrated into the system. So this is what the display brightness would be set at if V and DPO was not in the system. So in this particular example here, in this 7-inch tablet, the display brightness was set at 90%. Now the original system power was 2.42 watts. That's how much power the tablet was consuming at 90% brightness. Now we have here design emphasis. Um, I explained that V is a visual enhancement and DPO is power savings. And a customer can choose an emphasis on one or a mixture of both. This particular customer wanted power savings only. So the DPO emphasis, when our technology was put into the system, the brightness level they were able to drop from 90% to 30% without negatively affecting the viewing experience. When two of these tablets were put next to each other, the 90% brightness display and the 30% brightness display with our technology provided the same viewing experience. And because of the reduction from 90% to 30%, the power, system power was able to be dropped from 2.42 watts 
to 1.42 watts simply by reducing the backlight of the display without affecting the viewability. And that power consumption right there includes the power consumption of our chip. The, user was, or the OEM was able to save one full watt of power, which is a 41% battery life improvement. What this means is a 10-hour battery life becomes a 14-hour battery life with our technology. Now you can see, when we look through these different examples, the battery life improvement numbers are not consistent. They go from 15% to 41%. And the reason for that is, is some customers choose an emphasis on visual enhancement. Now, as I said earlier, the brighter the display is, generally the more viewable it is. And that's certainly true with our technology. If you make the display brighter, it will become more viewable. So what this particular OEM, who had an emphasis on, view, on viewability, or V, they were not interested in power savings. They wanted the best viewing experience in every lighting condition. And even though we put an emphasis on viewability, we still were able to improve battery life by 15%. That's very key here. When our technology, our chip, is put into tablets or into smartphones, we will always save battery power, and it will always be at least 10%, including the power consumption of our chip, and we will always make the display much more viewable, regardless of the emphasis that is chosen. And I talked a second ago, DPO 2.0, it can add an additional 10% in battery life improvement that is, of course, content dependent. Um, as I said, lower contrast content, you are able to save more power. So V and DPO applications, um, tablets, smartphones, and even Pico projectors. Um, we have a booth right outside the door where we have a Pico projector running with our technology on it that uh, after my speech and during a break, I welcome you to please come out and actually view what this technology does on a Pico projector. So use cases. Um, I, I talked about QuickLogic being a user experience expert. So obviously it must be very important to a user for, the, for this to be a benefit. So here are five use cases that uh, most of us will use our smartphone or our tablet for. Uh, streaming movies, uh, natively hosted movies, or movies that you have already loaded onto your smartphone. Gaming applications, um, internet browsing, of course, on the DigiTimes website, and uh, text and e-reading applications. So I'd like to talk about the impact of V and DPO on the viewability and power savings in each one of these applications. How does V and DPO affect the system when you're doing this particular application? First, with streaming movies and videos. V will absolutely improve the viewability of your display very significantly. We can stream movies on an iPad that we have outside that we've hacked with the V technology. We can show you how it improves the viewing experience. And then power savings, we will absolutely save power when you're streaming movies. Um, this is the best possible context for us to save power. Uh, natively hosted movies, Certainly, V will provide the same excellent viewing experiences with streamed movies, and it will also obviously provide power savings. Gaming applications, same thing. Excellent benefits for viewability, power saving benefits as well. Internet browsing, we will save power and we will make your display much more viewable. And then finally, the last case, text and e-reading. Now you'll notice I don't have pluses there. V, as I, as I mentioned, is a contrast ratio engine. Text, black on white, or white on black, is perfect contrast. You can't make it better. Um, one secret about smartphones is that everyone's on your smartphone, your phone application is always black on white or always white on black, and it's because your phone needs to be able to be dialed in any lighting environment, so that's why OEMs will always design phone applications to be very simple, white on black or black on white, because, of, because that, again, is perfect contrast. So system implementation. Our technologies are available on what we call our Arctic Link 2 VX platform of CSSP, or Customer Specific Standard Products. Um, that is the name we give to our ICs. We sit, as we say here, in the display path between the application or baseband processor and the actual display. 
We receive information on the ambient light sensor to best optimize the viewability and to best set the backlight. So finally, an executive summary on um, if, uh, if you were to ask me in one page, in one slide, what does our technology do? It's right here. First, our visual enhancement engine, it provides superior display viewability regardless of the user's ambient lighting environment. If you have a product that has V inside of it, you can take it outside in the middle of the day and watch a video and actually see very clearly what's on the screen. You can go inside. You can go from a dark lighting environment to a bright lighting environment without having to change your backlight. It will change automatically. For OEMs, V will give them a better user experience and much better product reviews. They can also promote this as an OEM unique technology. Um, we allow our OEMs to call V whatever they would like. Um, we're in production on a smartphone right now and on a tablet right now. Neither of those OEMs actually call it V. They have their own name for this technology. And for the user benefits, um, video and display content is clearly visible in all lighting conditions. You don't have to, when you're watching a video during the day, cover the light so you can actually see what's on the display. There's no more waiting to view it. Uh, you're allowed, you can view video immediately. You can view pictures immediately, wherever you are. And for DPO, Display Power Optimizer, it works with V to reduce display power consumption without sacrificing the user experience, and that's key. This technology will make your phone better. It, is not, it would not be good if we sacrifice user experience to save power. We don't do that. For an OEM benefit, an extended battery lifetime is a superior selling point. One of the biggest things that Apple promoted when the iPad was first introduced was 10-hour battery life. And they still talk about how good the battery life is. And this is something with DPO, as we said, we can get almost 40% better battery life. And OEM can use that as a very important selling feature for their product. And then DPO also enables uh, perhaps a lower capacity or lower cost battery to be used. If we can improve, if, if a system target is 10 hours for battery life, and we can make an existing battery last 12 hours, perhaps the OEM could buy a cheaper battery that would then make it last 10 hours. And then finally, for user benefits, DPO offers lower single charge battery life. As we showed the graph earlier, we've documented improvements up to, 50, up to 41%, and then content dependent savings can be up to 50% extended battery life. And then finally, longer battery lifetime due to less charging cycles. We all know the more often you charge your phone, the less the battery will last. There is this, only a certain amount of charging cycles that are allowed or will allow your battery to last. The less you charge it, the longer your device will last. I know most of us replace our smartphones every year, so we don't have to worry about charging batteries. Um, I'm cheap. I don't like to buy new equipment. So I like to make my equipment last as long as I can. So less charging is definitely a good thing. So finally, V, as we say here, seeing is believing. This is an image that you might see. That's actually with my technology, so without and with. And finally, our demonstration table is right outside of the door. So during the next break, we would invite you to come in. I would be more than happy to demonstrate this technology on a Pico projector, on a smartphone, and on a tablet. You can yourself turn the technology on and off. We can stream movies because the hotel was nice enough to offer free Wi-Fi. We can stream movies. You can see how the technology affects. and. Uh, Right now, I think I'd be happy to answer any questions that you may have. Uh,那因为时间的关系,那我们现在有开放现场问答,那就是如果在场来宾有任何问题想要发问的话,麻烦请举个手,我们会递麦克风给您。那现场来宾有任何问题吗?My uh, speech wasn't that good. I wasn't that clear. I talk too fast. I'm an American. We talk very fast. <laughs> no questions? Uh, uh, my question is, so your chip is very easily into, integrated into the 
Android and uh, iPhone. Uh, Correct. Okay. So. Yes, for for Android, we uh, I talked at the beginning about us being a, a solutions provider. For Android, we sell the chip. We also provide drivers for the chip. We also actually provide what we call MDDO, which is a user level application that we give to OEMs for free that they can put into their Android software when they ship the phone. And this allows the user to actually control V and DPO manually if they'd like to. Um, but it's a very good question. Um, certainly, uh, there's, no, there's no reason that we could not be very quickly integrated into iOS. Um, we're absolutely compatible with Android uh, 2.2, 2.3, 3.0. No reason to think uh, in the future. Uh, Windows Mobile, we're compatible with. Um, we were compatible with Symbian. Don't need to worry about that anymore. <laughs> Thank you. Sure. Thank you. Uh, VE is a uh, Huawei solution on uh, imaging enhancement technology. Mm -hmm. uh, I wonder uh, how about the power consumption on LED, power consumption on VE technology. Oh, how much the chip actually consumes? Yes. Um, the, the power consumption of the chip depends on the resolution and the frame rate that you're running. The current generation of V, V2.0, works up to WXGA, which is 1366 by 768 at uh, 60 frames per second. The chip at that rate will consume on the order of, I believe it is 120 milliwatts of power total. And that includes a bridging interface, if that's what you'd need to do. Um, the slide that I showed earlier uh, with the before and after took into account the power of our chip in the system. Um, so even though our chip consumes power by itself, because we're lowering the brightness of the display so much, the net impact on the system is always significant power savings. But of course, our chip consumes power and uh, system designers need to be uh, aware, aware of that, yes. Okay, my question is, uh, are you the only vendor in, in this kind of the business? Is there any uh, 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 competitor oh in the market? <laughs> it's hard to see. Um, there, are, there are many vendors of uh, power saving technology. Yes. There's many vendors of uh, enhancement technology. We are the only vendor of V for smartphones and tablets. We license the basis of the algorithm from a company called Apical, which is located in uh, the United Kingdom. Apical has shipped this technology into 50 million digital, still care, uh, digital or DSLR cameras. Um, we are the only company that offers V. We're the only company that offers a technology that both enhances the viewing experience of the display and saves power at the same time. Often, you either can save your other than quick logic, you either have to save power or you have to improve viewability. You can't do both. So it's a good question. Um, there's a lot of display improvement technologies out there. Um, nothing works like this. Uh, we've tested this at OEMs, and OEMs say, yes, this is, this is the best in the world. So I say, please buy it. OK, thank you. <laughs> Anyone else? Hi, Paul. Hi. Um, what's your interfaces for input and output? Also, second question is, uh, uh, since you need an ambient light sensor, uh, you, you detect an ambient light, so you need an ambient light sensor, right? Yes. And, and that will affect your ID design. Uh, yes, first question, uh, interfaces. We take in both an MDDI interface, which is of course a Qualcomm specification, as well as an RGB interface. We output 
RGB. Um, our next generation of chip, which is called uh, VHD, will have uh, multiple additional interfaces as well. We will be announcing that um, before the end of this calendar year, very likely in quarter four. Um, there's a Digitimes forum coming up on displays in December. Um, I would be uh, very surprised if we didn't introduce it at that, uh, at, at that seminar. Um, your second question was, oh, ambient light. Um, yes, you, you, for our technology to work um, at its best, you do need an ambient light sensor. Um, the good thing about smartphones and tablets is that every smartphone and tablet has an ambient light sensor inside of it. For feature phones, uh, for, for low cost phones that people like me buy who don't want to pay a lot of money, there may not be an ambient light sensor, but we don't, uh, we don't uh, attract that market. We work specifically in smartphones. So certainly we, we, we do need an ambient light sensor to make our, our technology work best, but it actually can work without an ambient light sensor. Um, one market that we work this technology in is actually the industrial signage market for um, advertising on trains, advertising in store kiosks. Those actually don't have ambient light sensors in them. It doesn't work as well as it could, but it still absolutely provides better viewability and provides power savings on that. 呃, uh, thank you. Uh, besides uh, the advantage, I'd like to know how um, how much system resource it use. None. Especially for CPU. None. 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 The chip does all of the processing internal on the chip. The only thing that we require of the CPU is a power source, obviously, and all of the video data, the pixel clock, the horizontal sync, and the V-sync from the system that are already present. There is no system resources required. We do not touch the CPU. In fact, we have a technology that works with V and DPO, um, uh, for instance, in a, in a static display mode. When your display content is not changing, we can actually shut down the CPU entirely. Um, the, the main thing to note about V and DPO, absolutely no requirements on the CPU. Um, not, that's a good question. Thank you. I should have I should have said that in my presentation. <laughs> I will next time. Okay. Um thanks for Paul's wonderful speech. Thank you.